Now at seven parents, you've got a tough decision to make as the school year starts in a pandemic. Do you send your kids to school or do you keep them at home for virtual learning? This morning, we're looking at all the options and letting you ask the questions. We're getting answers from experts about ways to handle this unprecedented school year. You're watching the CBS 58 News at 7 on WMLW. Well, good morning. Thank you for joining us. We are taking a live look outside this morning. Today is Tuesday. It's August 4th, and we sure hope that you're having a great start to your morning. This morning, we are focusing on homeschooling in Wisconsin, and we're answering your questions. Yeah, join our Facebook live stream right now on the CBS 58 Facebook page. Ask our experts questions about uh, kids returning to school in the fall, or maybe you're interested in homeschooling just as an option. You want to know more. You want to know how it would work, what you would need to do. Right now, we are taking those questions and getting answers for you throughout this entire hour. Yeah, no one size fits all, but at least our goal is to make sure that everyone learns more about it so that you can figure out what's best for you. But first, before we get to that, we have to get to a few of our top stories this morning. And and that includes a check of our forecast. Michael. Pauline Lee, I'm glad you're here in the studio, not in Rhinelander, where it was 43 degrees just a few minutes ago. That's almost see your breath type of weather. A little chilly for August standards, if you ask me. We're in the 50s here, uh, depending where you are. Closer to the lake, it's a little bit milder. 58 in Milwaukee, uh, off to the uh, west in Lake Country, 49 Beaver Dam, 52 in Fond du Lac. Fair skies for the most part, in and out the clouds today from time to time. As we get through the morning hours, temperatures jumping up into the upper 60s, responding to that nice August sunshine. Eventually more heat, more humidity and some storm chances to talk about. We'll do all that good stuff in just a few minutes. All right, Michael, thank you. Well, after so much anticipation and a number of COVID cancellations, the Brewers lose their home opener against the Chicago White Sox. Took five tries, one in March and three over the past weekend, but baseball finally returned to Miller Park. It just wasn't the ending that we were all looking for. Last night, there was nothing but a fake crowd noise as Christian Yelich and the rest of the crew were introduced. Many of them were distanced or wearing masks throughout the pregame rituals. There's a different atmosphere and, uh, you know, it feels a little bit like a different game, but once you, uh, you know, kind of lock in and uh, get used to it, it you, know, you try to get the hitters out. 10 months after 10 months in between games at Miller Park, the crew loses 4-6 to six against the White Sox. Two teams return to Miller Park at around 2 tonight, this afternoon I should say, uh, for round 2 this after tonight. First pitch is at 7-10. Wisconsin has hit a 5-week low in the number of new coronavirus cases. That says the number of processed tests also fell. There were 404 new cases in the state's latest report, and you can see the bulk of virus activity across Wisconsin has stayed the same. The total number of cases in the state is now more than 55,000. At least 949 people in the state have died from COVID-19 since March. And teachers unions are calling on Governor Tony Evers to force Wisconsin schools to start the year online. They just organized a caravan from Kenosha to Madison. State Republicans say they would try to block such a move if the governor tried to intervene. Governor Evers has signaled he is OK with the reopening plans that have been created by individual districts so far. And new this morning, parents, students and teachers in Whitefish Bay now have a better idea of how they'll be attending school in the fall. A school board meeting discussing their reopening plan went into the early morning hours overnight. So they've approved a blended model where students would be split up in two groups and each group would go to school in person two days a week. There would also be a virtual option for families. Now, if there is an outbreak or positive cases, the district could then be directed to go all virtual. So what are your options if your child's school chooses a reopening plan that you disagree with or maybe you just can't make happen? This morning we're talking with some experts to lay out all of your options. Yeah, we've been watching these school board meetings and reading their plans and we know the administrations have worked very hard to find a plan that they hope works out for everyone. But we also know it's, it's, a, it's a difficult decision for a lot of parents and we want everyone to know the options and homeschooling in Wisconsin is certainly an option for all families here. So Joining us virtually are Nicole Singleton with the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction and Carrie Krenitz with the Milwaukee Area Homeschool Collective. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. You're Thank welcome. you for Thank having you. us. So first of all, let's start with Nicole. Nicole, what does it mean to be a parent that homeschools in Wisconsin? This is something that you are actively doing. 
Sure. Um, to be a homeschooling parent uh, in the state of Wisconsin means that you're providing a curriculum for your child. So you are the administrator of the program, and in essence, you become the teacher. Um, so you're responsible for keeping track of hours of curriculum instructed, providing the correct number of hours, and making sure that you are providing a progressively sequential curriculum to the child. So now, um, Carrie, let's go to you. Uh, you homeschool, so what does your day entail? I feel like the idea of homeschooling is a really big one for parents to grasp if they've never done it. I would agree. I, I mean, it was a big jump for me to consider as well. Um, and I was doing that when there was not a pandemic. So um, this is a tough choice a lot of parents have. Uh, as for what my day looks like, one of the beautiful things about homeschooling is that it can look different every day. So depending on what we're doing that day, um, pre-COVID, we belong to a lot of different homeschool groups and collectives. We were going to a lot of different classes, museums. Uh, we kind of just adjusted our day based on what we were learning or um, what activities or events might be going on. So it's pretty flexible in that way. Again, we're taking your questions. You can join us on Facebook Live right now and get your questions answered here in real time. Let's go to our first question that we have on here. It's from Kiana. She asks, how do single parents, how are they supposed to do homeschooling and work full time? Is it possible, Carrie? Yes, I, I would say yes. I don't know if every parent would agree with me. Um, you know, if they're working from home, certainly that makes it a little bit easier. I did work uh, for many years while I was homeschooling and it's obviously more challenging. But one of the key things about homeschooling that I always like to point out to new parents is that the time it takes to teach a subject in your home setting or in a homeschool setting versus in a classroom is quite condensed. Teachers have to wear a lot of hats in school. Um, they're doing a lot of behavior management, a lot of behavior logistics, getting kids in line, getting them out of line, out for recess, in for recess. When you strip down all of those non-teaching moments, you um, can teach in a fraction of, a time, of the time what it would take a teacher to do in a classroom. And again, that's not a slight on teachers, it's just they have a lot of other tasks that they have to accomplish. So, you know, maybe two and a half hours teaching time in a home might equate to a whole day in school. So in that sense, they have more flexibility for a working mom mm -hmm. or dad. And, and Carrie, we have one more question. This comes from Lee. She asks, if your kids are old enough to stay home alone, are they old enough to be trusted to do schooling on their own? I mean, I, I don't have children yet that are, are old enough. I would say no. I mean, I think that goes against the nature of ch children everywhere, um, regardless of the age. I do think that there's a lot of autonomy in homeschooling that is to be expected. And I think if your children have been homeschooled, um, you know, they, they have a greater sense of independent work. Mm -hmm. But certainly, you know, children do their own work even in traditional schools. They have hours of homework that they're doing on their own. So, depends on your kid. Yeah, Carrie and Nicole, this topic, uh, we could go on for a while about this, but we are dedicating a full hour. So those of you who have posted your questions on the Facebook, we appreciate it. Keep chiming in. We still want to hear from you. We want to get all of your questions answered. So anything, nothing's off the table. Uh, ladies, stay with us. We'll have more coming up after the break. We'll answer your school reopening questions. So again, submit them on our Facebook Live that we have right now on CBS 58. Time right now is 7.08 on your Tuesday morning. You're watching the CBS 58 Morning News. The default position should be to try as best as you possibly can to open up the schools for in-person learning. It's important for the children because of the psychological benefit and in some places even for the nutrition of children who rely on the breakfast and the lunches in school for proper nutrition. Number two, there are important negative downstream effects that are unintended but can occur of a ripple effect on the parents 
who have to dramatically modify their own work schedule when you keep children at home. Dr. Anthony Fauci there saying the default position should be to keep schools open. Mm -hmm. That's right. So this comes as health experts. They're saying signs of a new surge of cases in the middle of the country. 15 states and the District of Columbia have reported an increase in COVID-19 infections. World Health Organization is warning that there may never be a silver bullet that could completely stop the disease. Well, this has many parents worried about sending their kids back to school, or maybe you're not comfortable with your children sitting on the computer for large portions of the day with the virtual learning plan, or maybe you're fine with either one of those, and that is totally okay. We're not saying one is better than the other here, but there has been a big increase in interest in homeschooling here in Wisconsin, so we wanted to get some uh, questions answered for our viewers. We're continuing the conversation on options available here to families in Wisconsin. Back with us virtually, Nicole Singleton with the Wisconsin Department of Public and Instruction and Carrie Krenitz, a homeschooling mom from the Milwaukee Area Homeschool Collective. And Nicole, we want to talk about uh, the logistics of how you start. Who is allowed to homeschool? What kind of credentials or background or certification do you need? And what do you do to make it all official? Sure. Um, parents can homeschool their children <coughs> from the ages of 6 to 18. If you're under the age of six as of September 1st, you're not required to submit a PI-1206 form. That is the homeschooling form. That form is available on our website, dpi.wi.gov for parents to submit. So you would go ahead and submit that form. That lets hit, let us know here at the state that you're homeschooling and then your resident school district is notified as well. Now we are taking questions on Facebook here. So this question can go to either Nicole or Carrie, but Dana is wondering, so uh, some good resources for curriculums and uh, where to find the state requirements for homeschooling. I can start with the curriculum. Uh, I think today there are so many different resources. Um, there's so many different homeschool websites, collectives, groups that can help direct you to um, all the different homeschool curriculums and options out there. Wisconsin Homeschool Support is a Facebook group and it's a wonderful group. Lots of veteran homeschoolers in there that can help make recommendations. Milwaukee Area Homeschool Collective is also another resource. Um, there's national organizations. I think the hardest part is not finding all of the resources, but choosing which curriculums best fit your family and your needs. Okay, and this next question is for Nicole. Does the state help with uh, financial resources, help with books, material, money to do homeschooling? Um, no, the Department of Public Instruction does not provide any type of grants or financial assistance for parents when they are purchasing materials or selecting curriculum. That is important to note that because you need to know exactly what you're getting into if you're doing this. Um, I'd also want to know if this is your plan for just one year if during the pandemic, assuming things are okay at the start of next school year. Uh, is this still the right thing to do, Carrie? If this is your plan for one year, is this is it a good option for families? Yeah, I think I don't see a disadvantage to it. Um, you get to spend some more time with your children. You get to see maybe more closely how they learn what piques their curiosity. I think it's it's a really uh, neat thing to be able to do with your children. Uh, I don't think there would be any concern about it only being for a year um, and then going back since, you know, teachers can even give guidance on what standards they should be at uh, when they return. Okay, this is a good conversation to have. We have a lot of engagement on our Facebook page. Again, we are on Facebook Live right now, so please join us in this conversation. We want to hear from you. We'll mm -hmm. continue this conversation in just a few minutes, but first, let's check with, check in with Michael on our Ready Weather Forecast. Good morning. Hey, Megan. Happy uh, Tuesday, everybody out there. By the way, National Coast Guard Day. Just want to recognize everybody who serves in the military, especially that particular branch. Uh, Weather-wise today, uh, looking better than yesterday in terms of sky conditions. More sunshine out there and a little more humidity as we uh, get through the next few days, but nothing out of control, nothing off the charts, which is some good news. Some pretty uh, late clouds today looking off to the east. Uh, you could see uh, fair weather clouds. That is temperatures in the upper 50s. Feels like 58. Northerly winds about 10 miles an hour. Dew point numbers fairly low right now. A satellite radar 
Again, uh, high and dry showers well to the east and well to the west. 69 the expected high northerly winds about 5 to 10 uh, lows tonight will be close to 55. Another comfy night out there. Open up the windows. Winds go to the west 5 to 10 and then beyond this point 75 tomorrow 78 on Thursday 82 on Friday. I think dry days all in all Thursday, maybe a slight fly in the ointment. Have to watch some moisture off to the west. In the 80s for the weekend, I think an increase an uptick of showers and storms coming later Saturday, Sunday on and off and Monday too. not all day. Temperatures well in the 80s, more humidity, obviously overnight lows not quite as comfortable will be in the 60s and by that point. So bear that in mind. Just love this photo from uh, Susan from Caledonia. See that pink mist is what she's calling it. That beautiful sun up shot on Lake Michigan picks at CBS 58.com to send your photos that way or via our weather mobile app, which is very easy to download. It's free and it's very fun functional any time of the year. Keep track of what's going on radar. Again, send those photos our way. Michael, thank you. Still ahead this morning, we continue to dive into your back to school questions, specifically about homeschooling here. You can submit those questions on our Facebook live stream. It's live right now on the CBS 58 Facebook page. When we come back, we're talking about the options parents have when it comes to homeschooling. Again, homeschooling, not virtual learning. That's a school district plan. Homeschooling is you're teaching your own kids and ways to keep kids engaged when they're not in the classroom. What else can you do with the kids? Time right now, 719. Keep those questions coming on this Tuesday morning. You're watching the CBS 58 Morning News. Isaias makes landfall near Ocean Isle Beach. North Carolina is a Category 1 hurricane that's packing winds of about 85 miles an hour. The now tropical storm has battered the region with rain, flooding and power outages. Millions remain in the storm's path as it moves up the east coast towards Maine. Definitely a different story here, though, Michael. Pauline, uh, weather wise, we're talking about mixture of sun and clouds. Uh, temperatures still cool despite the sun we get today, only around 70, 75 on your uh, Wednesday, and then into the 80s by the end of the week, and also an increased chance of scattered showers and storms. Not all day, but especially later Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, on and off. Overnight lows not quite as comfortable in the 60s, and then we keep the 80s into the middle of next week. Of course, you know, this is the dog days of summer. This is sort of what you expect this time of year. Well, we're back now talking with Nicole with the Wisconsin DPI and then Carrie with the Milwaukee Area Homeschool Collective. I wanted to follow up on the thing we were talking about coming uh, into the last break. We were talking about maybe doing this for one year. How do you get back into it? Nicole, what's the, 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 state, the state's uh, response to that? Um, how can you get back into just going to regular school? And going back to regular school in the middle of the school year or for next year? What exactly? Uh, going into the next school year. So if you do homeschooling for one full academic year and then you want to go back to your school district. Sure. So parents are required to submit that PI 1206 annually or every year that they plan to homeschool. So if in the following year they're planning not to homeschool their child and they want to return back to their resident school district, then they just would not submit the PI 1206 form and then they would contact the resident district about registering and enrolling for the school year. Got it. Now let's talk about keeping kids busy and learning and some resources for parents. Carrie, I know as a parent who is homeschooling, uh, let's talk about a few options maybe for homeschool field trips. Well, I would say before COVID, um, where our you know social options weren't so limited, I most of our day <laughs> is a field trip. There are uh, a number of groups and collectives and homeschool specific programs that my children and a lot of their friends attend on a weekly basis. So, you know, even just going to the museum, um, nature centers, hikes. I mean, there's so many uh, different options for people to go out and about where there were so many options, I should say. I don't know what uh, those options will be this year. I know some of them are limited now. Gotcha. Nicole and Carrie, uh, hang tight and everyone commenting on Facebook. Uh, be sure to keep submitting your questions. We'll be, we'll be uh, continuing the conversation after this break. Stay with us. And make sure to ask your questions through our Facebook live stream as well. We'll try to do our best to get all of them answered on air for you as best as we can. The time right now is 725. You're watching CBS 58 Morning News.
You're watching the CBS 58 News at 7 on WMLW. Well, good morning. Thanks for joining us. It is Tuesday, August 4th. I'm Mike Kirkhoff here in the main studio. And I'm Pauline Lee with Megan Rystad over here in Studio B. And this morning we are taking your back to school questions. We're talking about homeschooling in Wisconsin, the myths, the facts, everything in between that you might be wondering. We're also answering your questions on Facebook Live right now. So if you have questions, you're wondering if homeschooling is right for you and your family as opposed to whatever your local school district plan is. Not that there's anything wrong with the school district plans, but it's good to know the options. Ask them on our Facebook page and we'll get those answers for you as soon as we can here on the M. Right now, let's go to meteorologist Michael Schlesinger to get a check of what the forecast looks like today. Hey, Michael. I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, different, it's a weather question. When can you start to see your breath? Some of these cool mornings like October. today. <laughs> 40s and 50s, I think, yeah, probably. Like they're seeing up north, 47 around the Northwoods, 58 in Milwaukee, 52 in Janesville. You hone into the area, uh, lots of 50s, although 49 Beaver Dam, one of the cooler spots, well in the 50s lakeside. As we proceed through the morning hours, temperatures uh, climbing in the 60s, only around 70, just like yesterday. The big difference, more sun than uh, what we saw yesterday. Eventually, we're going to convert those numbers to the 80s at the end of the week. But what are the storm chances? I'll let you know coming up in a few minutes. Thanks, Michael. The new school year is right around the corner, and that's leaving a lot of families right now with a lot of questions. During this pandemic, are students headed back to the classroom? Should they stay at home and learn virtually, or is homeschooling a better option? This morning, we're working to get you answers. Well, back with us virtually are Nicole Singleton with the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction, and we also have Carrie Krenitz with the Milwaukee Area Homeschool Collective. Uh, Carrie, I think we're going to take a Facebook question. This one's probably more for you. Uh, Dana is wondering about kind of the social setting of schools, right? So her daughter sounds like she does well in group settings, a little bit more lonely at home. Is there something to be said about that social aspect, learning those social skills in a classroom? I mean, do you think kids miss that if they're at home? That's uh, a really good question and probably the most asked question when I tell people that we homeschool, how are your children socialized? And I think it's important first to kind of think about what socialization is, which is the acquisition of skills that help kids navigate the world around them. And in a classroom, their social interactions are fairly limited. Um, also, you can kind of assume that, you know, kids in school school also don't yet have all of those necessary social skills. So the idea that they can learn them from each other or the idea that that's the most ideal setting is kind of counterintuitive when you think of it. Um, homeschool kids, by contrast, at least the ones that I, I know, are often out in the world. They're interacting with different groups, different classrooms, different activities, people of all different ages. Uh, so I would almost argue that that is a more um, robust social experience than uh, children have in a classroom. Now, again, with uh, COVID, I think everybody's going to be a little under socialized this year. So um, we'll have to see what groups and activities are still available for people. Okay, we're going to talk more about uh, maybe some of the myths coming up in our, our next segment. Um, but we have a couple questions here from Lauren. These are good questions for Nicole. You kind of maybe already answered these a little bit, but I want Lauren to hear this answer. Uh, she wants to know, does a parent have to be a teacher to homeschool? And she asked if there is a state website where you have to keep up with your child's progress. Oh, okay. Um, those are, are questions that we get quite often. And no, um, you don't have to be a teacher. There are no minimum requirements that you have to have to be able to homeschool your child. Um, and you don't have to have a teacher's license or certification in order to homeschool. Um, and in response to the second question, there is not a state website that you would have to use to keep track of your progress. The only part requirement that we have at the department is to submit that PI-1206 form so parents can keep track of their child's progress in any way that they see fit, be a notebook, a calendar, um, a running tab on a computer, anything like that. And Carrie, moving now to a question for you. This comes from a viewer named Brian. He asks, how much could a parent expect to spend in a year for homeschooling? Ooh, that's a tough one. I think the answer to that would depend somewhat on the age of your child and how many um, extra co-ops or groups or classes that your child can take. The curriculum itself um, can range in cost from, you know, $5 to a couple hundred dollars. There are a lot of great sites, though, for used curriculum. 
Um, there's a lot of wonderful, inexpensive resources. My favorite place to get uh, school curriculum is Barnes and Noble, um, or just your local bookstore. Usually has a pretty good stock. Um, but it really will depend on how many outside activities you would have your child do and the cost for those. Carrie, the Kirkhoff family is strongly considering homeschooling, and my wife, Allison, wants to know how old your kids are and what does your instructional day look like? What would a typical day look like? Sure. Uh, my children are six and eight, and so we'll be going into third and first grade this year. And I like to get a lot of our core subjects done in the morning or, you know, late morning. And so we'll, we'll do a lot of reading, math, depending on the day, either science or some kind of social studies. And then we leave, you know, the rest of the afternoon open for them to either explore something that they're interested in, or we'll go to a museum, or we'll take part in a homeschool group, collective, hike. Uh, so their day is, is pretty full, but a lot of it is spent doing activities you would otherwise have to wait until after school to do. So that's kind of nice to have that free time to explore. And Carrie, this question is also for you. I mean, I think a lot of parents, they think of homeschooling, they think of our educators, they had to go to school, they get a, get a degree, uh, maybe a master's degree, maybe a doctorate. Was that something that was daunting for you taking that on? Or do you have a background in education? I do not have a background in education. Um, my graduate degree is in political science, so not anywhere near. But I would, you do not have to be a teacher to educate your child. Many of the curriculums that are available for home study are developed by teachers and people with graduate degrees in education. You also, I always tell people, you don't have to be your child's specialist. Uh, if there's a specialized course of study that you want them to do, you can absolutely ha have somebody else help you with that or have them enrolled in a class of some sort. But you know, parents need to remember that they've been homeschooling their children since they've been born. You know, they taught them the ABCs, you read to them, you sit down and talk to them about what's going on in the world. They can absolutely do this, teacher or not. Hmm, I like that encouragement. Thank you so much, both Nicole and Carrie, uh, for sharing your insight with us this morning. A lot of people very curious about this topic. We do have to take a quick break, though, but we want to make sure that we get back to answer as many of your questions as possible about schools reopening, homeschooling. Uh, please submit them on our Facebook live stream and we will get them answered on air. Coming up next, we're breaking down the myths and facts when it comes to homeschooling in Wisconsin. It is 736 on your Tuesday morning. You're watching CBS 58 Morning News. Well, welcome back as we continue our important conversation about kids returning to school or uh, at least maybe home school learning this fall. And we want to talk right now about some of the myths and facts that are surrounding this topic. Yeah, for that, let's check back in with uh, Carrie Krennitz with the Milwaukee Area Homeschool Collective. Carrie, we kind of talked about uh, some of the myths that you hear a lot. And we have a question on our Facebook page from Christian about socialization. And one of the myths, uh, you know, I'll just come out and, right out and ask it, are homeschool kids weird or different or, or <laughs> strange in some way? Uh, well, you know, sometimes uh, kids are just weird, you know. Um, but no, I think, again, the idea that homeschool kids are under socialized is one of the biggest myths out there. Um, kids in school do not have the ideal socialization setting. Often, uh, much of their day is spent restricted in terms of their interaction with other kids. You know, they're not socializing all day. There's often teachers struggle to get kids to stop talking, pay attention. Um, and so it's not the ideal setting that I think parents think it is. Um, contrasted with, again, a, a homeschool child who is actually out often, much of their day is spent interacting out in the world, different ages, different groups, key components to socialization, right? We want our kids to be able to better navigate the social world, their peers, their friends, their family, and what better place to learn that but out in the world. Um, I think a teacher you know, wears a lot of hats and they can't you know, guide every social interaction that children have in a school setting. And because kids don't go to school with the necessary skills already, I think that's why you see a lot of bullying and antisocial behavior like teasing, exclusion, etc. 
So I would argue that homeschool kids have a much more robust social experience. Nicole, I think this next question is for you. Uh, there's a myth out there that parents may not be qualified to teach their students. And does that mean that students, if they're homeschooled, they may not be, maybe get all the education that they need to succeed when they move on to maybe like middle school, high school, even college? I think that that's definitely a myth. Um, there aren't any requirements for <clears throat> a parent to homeschool their child um, in terms of a certification or a degree. Um, but I, I do believe that that is a myth, um, as Carrie stated earlier, and that's a good thing to point out, is that you learn most of your beginnings from your parent. Um, so who better to um, instruct you and your parent knows you better than your teacher does. Um, so this is just from a personal point of view. I, I think that parents are, are more than qualified to to teach their children homeschooling. Definitely some great insight, ladies. Stick with us. We are still taking your questions on Facebook, so keep commenting. We still want to hear from you and get to the answers that you are hoping to get. That's right. We'll be back in just a few minutes. We're just going to take a quick break, and then we want to hear more from you. We'll see you in just a few minutes. As we wrap up our, uh, oh, sorry, was that me? I heard someone talking. Anyway, sorry about that. We're continuing our conversation here about uh, homeschooling here in Wisconsin as we look at all the different options that are available to us as we restart the school year. Homeschooling, definitely one of them. We're answering your questions right here coming from our Facebook live stream. Join us right there right now. Let's throw it over to Michael Schlesinger for the check of our forecast. I heard something. I heard something. Don't answer. That's when you have problems. All right. Trust me, I know. All right. Let's see what's happening now with the uh, ready cast as we go through the day today. We're talking about that onshore fetch of wind. That means a little bit cooler lakeside. Uh, all of us on the cooler side of things today. Uh, 60s once again, just like yesterday, but more sun. Overnight lows, 40s and 50s, and then we jump in the 70s for everybody as winds start to switch to the south and west. Your temperature is 58 right now. The winds to the north about 10, 52 in Fondy, 51 Beaver Dam. 52 Janesville, upper 50s by the lake. At Water Beach temperature around 70. Very nice. 69 today, 75 tomorrow, upper 70s Thursday, more clouds at least. 80s for the weekend. On and off showers and storms don't cancel the plans. Keep an eye to the sky, especially into Sunday. Overnight lows generally in the 60s to around 70 by the end of the week with more humidity. 88 on Monday, still the risk of some showers and storms. Michael, thanks. And we are back. Don't forget about the app. Download it. It's a great way to keep track of the weather when it changes. And as families continue to navigate and adapt during the pandemic, going back to school is now on their list of unknowns. That's right. So we are back with Nicole and Carrie, our two education experts, and we're taking your questions about back to school, how to homeschool, what could be an option. Again, we're not saying any one option is better than the other. We're trying to weigh the pros and cons so that you can decide what is best for you and your family. So Carrie, this question is for you. What would you say some of the drawbacks are to homeschooling your children? Hmm. I think perhaps the biggest one is that, for me at least, the, the biggest one is that kids that go to a, like a public school tend to enjoy close proximity to their close or to their school friends. So having homeschooled children are their friend network are a little bit more spread out. But other than that, I don't, to be honest, I love homeschooling. I think it offers so many advantages. I'm struggling to think of a, of a disadvantage. Maybe access to sports. Um, mm. It's a bit easier to access those extracurricular teams and such in a public school. Nicole, we have a question for you about, um, what about kindergarten? You mentioned uh, six-year-olds and, and up. What about going from kindergarten into first grade on, on the DPI website? There's some question about um, getting approval from your district. How exactly does that work? And what would happen if you moved to a different district or a different state? And that's a good question. We get that question all of the time. Um, since the compulsory school age starts at the age of six, um, there isn't a way for a parent to say that they're homeschooling their child if they're under the age of six. Um, so they're not required to complete that PI-1206 form. But on the other hand, Wisconsin state law says that um, 
a parent and a child has to complete a kindergarten program prior to attending first grade. Um, so early childhood calls it keeping the child at home and not necessarily homeschooling for, for 5K. So a parent should know that if they are going to keep their child at home for kindergarten, um, they would have to pass what would be considered a cu kindergarten curriculum in order to go to first grade. Um, and parents who do not complete that step would have to um, complete a waiver from the school district in order to attend first grade. Nicole, Carrie, thank you so much for your insights. Stay put. We still want to continue the conversation after the break. And those of you who are uh, posting your questions onto Facebook, we promise we will get to them. And next up after the break, we're going to talk about some of the resources that are available for families who are interested in homeschooling. Time right now is 7.50. It's on your Tuesday morning. You're watching the CBS 58 Morning News at 7 right here on WMLWDM. We'll see you on the other side of this break. As we wrap up our conversation about homeschool and what school may look like for students across Wisconsin this fall, we want to make sure people have the facts and the resources to, to continue uh, investigating this. So, Nicole and Carrie, what are some resources that you would recommend for people to get that information? Nicole, let's start with, start with you. Sure. Um, our website, dpi www.dpi. Wait. <laughs> It's been a website provides a lot of information for um, questions regarding homeschooling. We have a frequently asked questions document that's available um, for parents to look and it has a lot of information on what to do, next steps, things of that nature. Um, so parents can always go out to our website and look at that information. Carrie? Uh, the best groups I think for people to start with are Wisconsin homeschool support after DPI, Wisconsin Homeschool Support, uh, Wisconsin Parents Association, and then find a local collective or group in your specific area. Milwaukee has a lot of them, Milwaukee Homeschool Collective being one of them, Milwaukee Area Home Learners, there's so many. So find the ones in your areas and start, start there and ask questions. And now Carrie, for parents who think, I don't think I could ever do this, I, I just don't know. I mean, what would you say to them? You can absolutely do this. You have been doing this. Again, since your child was born, you have been homeschooling them. Uh, there's so much support resources, and the best part, I think, is the community of homeschoolers that the Milwaukee area has. You're not doing this alone. There are people there to support you and help you through this transition if you choose to make it. So have faith, you can absolutely do it. Mm -hmm. All right, have the faith, as she said. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, both of you, for taking the time to talk with us this morning and answer some very important questions. We also want to say thank you to everyone who sent us your questions through Facebook Live. We had a lot of really good questions there this morning. Let's get a final check of our forecast. Okay, Megan, thank you very much. You look at the 10 day trend, easily you can see a trend setting up. We're getting milder more humid and eventually we run into storm chances, especially for the weekend, uh, especially later Saturday and Sunday on and off. Not all day 69 today, 75 tomorrow, 78 on Thursday. Oh, uh, uh, easily in the 80s, 82 on Friday. Well in the 80s for the weekend, more humidity overnight lows. Obviously, as we get into the weekend, certainly not as comfortable either with lows in the 60s to around 70. Thank you, Michael. Well, hopefully I, today we dedicated a full hour to answering your questions and our hope was not to pick one better than the other, but to give you guys more insight and hopefully making that decision the best one for your own family. For a lot of school districts, the registration time is right now. So you watch the school board meeting, read the entire reopening plan, then you watch this resource and hopefully you have a good idea of what choice is best for your family, whichever choice you make. Right, lots of good questions there. We certainly thank everyone who participated this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Have a wonderful day, everyone.